try the newest, cheapest, and fastest delivery in Express service. Introducing Moto Express PH. You can now leave your shopping and delivery needs with us without much exposure and interaction to people outside. Mapa grocery items, medicines, foods, and other essentials and halal certified products kami na ang mamimili at maghahatid sa'yo. Sinisigurado na ligtas, in good and quality condition ang mga pabili o orders sa delivery service na iyong i-avail. Para sa maayos at mabilis na delivery at order mo, ipamoto mo na. Download Moro Express PH app through Google Play that is built to deliver beyond your expectation. Tara na dito sa Moto Express. Dahil Moto Moto! Are you craving for some milk tea donuts but you're watching your diet? Good news! You can now enjoy a healthier and superbly delicious keto milk tea and donuts here at Winkle Milk Tea and Winkle Donut. Has fewer calories so it's good for the health and diet conscious and controlling weight. Why choose Winkle Milk Tea and Winkle Donut? The first halal certified milk Winkle teas and Winkle Donut in the Philippines. The first healthy keto milk tea franchise in the Philippines. FDA approved. Uniquely infused milk tea flavors with high quality ingredients in free premium taste. And if you want a healthy and refreshing franchise opportunity, a competitive healthy blended milk tea and donut franchise awaits you. We have business opportunity options you can choose from. Online seller, micro franchise, unit franchise, master franchise, international franchise. Order via our Facebook page, Winkle Team Winkle Donut, or contact 0995-551-4380 to experience this happiness in a box with your favorite Winkle Milk Tea and Winkle Donut. Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you on how to register in our platform. Firstly, you need to click www.ejasmine.com. This is how our platform interface looks like once you click www.ejasmine.com. As you can see, on the top right corner, click the login or register button. You will see two options which is login button and register button. If you already have an account, just simply fill in your details. But if you does not have an account, click the register button and fill in your details requirement. If you are interested for becoming a vendor, you can click become a vendor button below. For vendor registration, you need to complete the details requirement. If you have halal certificate, you need to upload it on this section. Last but not least, once you have completed all the detailed requirements, just click the register button. Thank you! Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the entirely merciful, the specially merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh po sa inyong mga kapatid ko sa Islam and good afternoon sa ating mga kababayan. I am Elenida Jess, uh, co-host ni Sharia Counselor Noor of this program. Uh, Pag-usapan natin pananampalataya, karapatan, at pananagutan. Um, Alhamdulillah, we are once again in this program. I would like to give my thanks to President Ismail Abaya of GPTV 168. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And thank you po, Press Ismail. Thank you rin sa Bounce Back Network at sa, sa mga affiliate channels nito worldwide. And thank you rin po kay Technical Director Carl. Alhamdulillah, this program is a platform for Muslims, Filipino Muslims, to share with the public on what they believe in, what they practice, in line with the Deen Islam. Alhamdulillah. So, 
I will be uh, joined in by our sisters and brothers in Islam. Uh, inshallah, I hope that they are at the backstage already to share with us uh, their personal opinions with regards to some issues that we are going to discuss this afternoon. I hope yung ating mga tagapagsubaybay, at yung, lalo na rin yung sa mga baguhan pa sa program dito, uh, inshallah you will be with us until uh, the end of our program, inshallah. So, I will be calling in Sister Lenny Nueva. Salam alaikum, sis. Uh, Sister Mona Leaf, as well as Brother Dawood. If um, Brother Brian Toledo is around, please um, join us here. And I, I am also co calling in Supervisor Olambe Tantuas. She's from uh, Mindanao, inshallah. I hope they have not experienced difficulty in, in entering the stream yard. Uh, direct card, please facilitate our brothers and sisters. Hopefully, they are at the backstage. <clears throat> Inshallah, mga kapatid namin sa Islam, ang pag-uusapan po natin with the presence of ating mga brothers and sisters mamaya ay yung tungkol po sa... Ano ang magagawa ng mga Muslim adults? Ano yung rule na na ano na kanilang maibabahagi lalo na po sa ating mga kabataang Muslims, especially sa pandemic time. Of course, we know so well that there are a lot of challenges our Muslim youngsters or youth have been experiencing and might be this will guide our Muslim brothers and sisters who are listening or watching us right now on what they can do better, uh, especially with the sharing of our brothers and sisters, inshallah, here. So, um, of course, uh, we will be dealing with, for example, the youth. We know so well that <clears throat> our youth of today are are somehow uh, different from our time, especially I'm referring uh, me, for example, with those uh, brothers and sisters of mine who are at my age, that we experience a different scenario while we grow up, while we became uh, youngsters, while we were, we were students of those time. And now, the youth of our gen of this generation have somehow a different outlooks in lives, have different um, uh, experiences or exposure, and we hope that we as adults have tried our best to understand our youngsters. We really need as Muslim adults to know. What are our uh, our youngsters, our youth are facing? Not only um, uh, not only on this uh, time of pandemic, but what, for example, are their outlooks in life? How do they deal with themselves? What are their activities? Who are they are with? And many more that we really need have to know uh, from our youngsters, inshallah. So I hope that our brothers and sisters, especially our guests this afternoon, find time to, to, to be in our program, inshallah. Remember that two or more heads are better than one. And we will be learning too from our brothers and sisters on how they try to adapt themselves with the kind of teenagers, with the kind of youth that we are having at this time. 
maybe for those uh, uh, parents out there, especially for the Muslims, um, you have something to share. And these sharings are, of course, are very valuable to us. We are in different situations. We are in different scenario. We are dealing with different uh, personalities from different background. We would like to know how you were able to do something to guide our youth, inshallah. And of course, um, uh, there are sharing that are based on what we have really experienced, or maybe we can share something, something that of theoretical. Maybe we learned that from our readings, from what we have seen on the YouTube, or what we have been hearing from the people around us. So these ideas would somehow be also be shared. And alhamdulillah, the more ideas we have, the more sharing that you can uh, give us, the better uh, the better opportunity for us to understand more our youth, especially the Muslim youth. Inshallah. Uh, Derek, kumusta yung ating mga kapatid na mga Muslims? Are they already on stage or uh, the backstage? You know what? Uh, for those who have no idea of uh, what my previous uh, employment was I was a teacher in high school uh, that has been for 26 years yes you heard it right for 26 years I was assigned in a public school and uh, of course uh, you know in a public school uh, and of course we are in a non-muslim country I am uh, I have a lot of experiences dealing with the youth. And um, with those 26 of experiences that I have, I somehow observed that on my first few years of teaching, especially I was assigned in a mountain barangay uh, here in Cebu. Alhamdulillah, um, way back uh, early 90s, I really see something uh, worthwhile with my students. They were not Muslims. I was not then a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. But you know what? Um, I, I have observed my students then. Uh, they really had that uh, desire to learn, to acquire more knowledge. They have that uh, they have that attitude that I was really very appreciative even up to now. And I'm remembering how my students were then. And I am um, so happy having that opportunity dealing with them. And alhamdulillah, those experiences also helped me become a better individual, a better, not only as a better teacher, I, that was my opinion, but this also, the experiences that I have with my students somehow mold me as a person. And um, with what I've, I was seeing from my students, um, that desire to learn, that desire to, to have the education, the sincerity that are coming from their hearts, was really very, uh, this have an impact on myself as a teacher then. Can you just imagine, I would just like to share this with you because uh, as I have mentioned earlier, that uh, as a Muslim, we need to, to understand our youth. And as adult, we need to know how our youngsters especially our, uh, the generation of Muslims these times, how are they behaving? How are they coping up with the uncertainties of time? Uh, what are 
the things that uh, put them into situations by which uh, somehow we can see that uh, there is really a there is really a certain uh, I would I would say that there is really a certain uh, gap or certain a uh, vacuum as I would describe in what I am seeing this uh, with my, I am just basing with my experience. Of course, we have different experiences. And what I'm sharing with you is that my experience as a teacher in a public school for 26 years, then later I become a Muslim. And of course, I was in an environment with the non-Muslim and how I was uh, able to do something to perform my task at the same time, uh, be able to um, face bravely the challenges that I was having. So going back to that experience in my first few words, a few years of teaching in a uh, barangay school, um, I have really observed that on those years, that was early 90s, the students, even how far their homes to the to the school they really tried to do something to be present in a day even how many oh, kilometers they have to traverse just to get to the school they were really trying their best to to um, somehow manage those obstacles. And can you just imagine that in a remote barangay that was 15 kilometers to the municipality of Sibunga, um, there, there was no enough transportation way back then. Only one transportation, a jeepney, that brings the teacher to the site. And in the afternoon, would take back the teachers to their respective home. So my, the students that I have been observed, uh, I was able to observe that they were not used to seeing transportation. So what happened then was this. Every time they see the, the vehicle, they would really watch it until it the, disappears before their eyes. So with that, with that kind of scenario that I was seeing among the youngsters at that time, I really felt pity with them. Not only those high school students I had, but also with the elementary students. Now, especially, I don't know if you have experienced this, um, when, for example, during recess time, I see some stu uh, pupils, Having their food, just imagine a, a chunk, let's say, I'm just using the term uh, chunk of uh, food on their hand. And then they are running around playing with their playmates. And at that time, I was really so uh, amazed with their... Uh, with their characters, with a simple, simple activity that they have that brings happiness to them. Yes, those are the experiences that I have. And aside from that, I also see my students that, uh, for example, uh, of course, uh, it was a mountainous barangay. The, the, the when they, when they, when they go to school they would not be wearing their pair of shoes, right? They would take their, uh, they would carry their pair of shoes. On the other hand, on their other hand, they are also bringing a gallon of water. And by the time they reach the doorstep of our classroom, that's the time they would clean their feet with that gallon of water that they have brought. So. Uh, at that time, really, I, I could see the sincerity, the desire of those youth to have the education. 
because at that time we were the first two teachers me and my uh, teacher in charge then to have this opportunity for them to give the education and just imagine it has long uh, been a long years that they need to travel from one for certain kilometers just to reach the high school that was in the population or else they would stay with their relatives for the whole week and just go back to their parent on weekdays or weekends. So alhamdulillah, by that time I was assigned with my um, teacher in charge by then, um, they were as if really are new to the kind of environment where there is already a teacher or there are already there were already teachers who would cater to their needs to be educated. And you know what? On those times, or especially in the early 90s, they these students of ours were so courteous. They would bring our bags they would carry our bags and for example there are activities school activities this uh these students would really bring uh bring fruits bring vegetables something that they could share with the teachers alhamdulillah that was really a very uh, memorable experience that i have way back then and um I learned a lot, um, and with the kind of scenario that I was seeing among my students there, something was formed in my mind at that time. I was not yet a Muslim, and I was, I was imagining that uh, maybe something could be done, could be, could be done to help these students. But alhamdulillah, um, uh, with that, my desire to do something for the community really as if grow and that passion to help uh, my students really have a, a blossom. And alhamdulillah, these are these students, those students of mine were really. Uh, instrumental on the way I become who am I now, Alhamdulillah, and those experiences that I have with them, especially for those students I have in the mountainous barangay, they have taught me compassion, they have taught me courage, they have taught me a lot of values of which that I really treasured in my heart, alhamdulillah. And of course, um, with those, uh, I, I, ha I had only uh, six years experience with them. And you know what? Um, those people around, especially their parents, were very supportive. People in the barangay areas are really supportive to the, to the people in the academy, to us teachers, alhamdulillah. And uh, they, we have this, what we call mutual, um, mutual benefits uh, among us. Um, they, they really have this high regards, high respect with the teachers, as well as our students way back then are really also very respectful. And alhamdulillah, and I have been noticing even on my social media, I have seen a lot of them really have progressing in lives. The way that they were used to be were not anymore seen at this time. There was really a big change that is happening among my students. Uh, uh, alhamdulillah. And now, after that uh, experience that I have with these students, I have in uh, I could mention the name of the school that was uh, Chidoro de la Vega Memorial National High School. Alhamdulillah, our graduates there were really uh, students who have that uh, vision for their lives. 
not only for them, but as well as for their families, for the people in their community. And alhamdulillah, they have achieved most of my students, especially for the, maybe for the first few batches in, uh, in my stay there. Some are already teachers, so they were already my colleague uh, at the time, a few years back. And alhamdulillah, others already in abroad. Now, when I transferred from one school, from that school, that barangay school, to to the to the uh, to the uh, to another school, and that is in Sibunga National High School, I was really uh, seeing a later uh, as years uh, move. I have been observing that somehow, especially, uh, I am only sharing based on my experience that as years pass by, there are a lot of things that is happening among our students. Especially, I'm talking on the attitude, the attitude of our students. And... Um, a lot of problems that they have been facing. Uh, somehow, especially, um, I really believe that, especially, we, there is what we call certain level in uh, the states of our, I mean, the states of our youth, by which these youths are really confused. Yes, they are somehow confused, especially, uh, I have been noticing this. Most of the problems that we have been encountering or that we have encountered are those students in the third year. And that is now what we call in grade nine level. So uh, with that, with uh, my exposure to this kind of students, especially for the third year or for the grade nine students, I have been seeing that uh, these problems were not really uh, minimized as the years pass by with regards to the attitude of the students. And the sad thing was that as if uh, this kind of attitude among our students somehow, I am referring to the kind of attitude that is not really pleasing, especially within a classroom setting. Can you just imagine a teacher in an hour class facing 50? Some, that 50 is just the minimum. But in public school, we are facing 60 students, 70 students, or even there was a time I was teaching a PE class with 80 plus students in in one time. Can you just imagine the experience of a teacher at that time teaching the students without uh, much resources that can be given to our students for them really to learn what we are targeting or the objective that we have. So this is really the scenario that I was facing at that time and um, aside from that, is uh, you you have to factor also the the attitude of the students. Even one or two or three students misbehaving in a class, that could be enough to disrupt the activity for the entire class. Yes, that's true. It's not easy to be a teacher. It's not easy to face 50, 60, 70 students or more at one setting at one time. Especially, I'm referring to my experience. I'm basing my, what I'm sharing with you, my own experience as a public school teacher. So with those kind of exposure that I have, of course, I was uh, at that time, uh, there were long years that I was with them, not as a Muslim. Um, as a non-Muslim by that time, I was not able to 
to adapt myself with the kind of attitude that my students were manifesting. So as if I also have shown to them that I was a tough teacher, that I am, let's say, the master of this classroom, that they need to follow me. So somehow I was the uh, not so understanding teacher. I would, uh, would use the term because um, I did not possess much the, I would admit the, the quality of being uh, someone who has the patience, who has the compassion. At that time, I was not a Muslim, so I even uh, I even have to as if do something that would really make the students realize that I was really angry with them. But soon, of course, when I become Alhamdulillah a Muslim, somehow something inside me changed. And that was on how I deal with the students. You know, you can, remember, can you remember that I mentioned that it's hard to deal with students, especially with the grade nine or the, at that time, the, the third year students. And later, uh, when I became a, a Muslim, I now have the deeper understanding on why my students are behaving. But of course, it was a struggle. It was a journey on my part on how would I interact with them? How would I, uh, how would I adjust myself to the situation? Of course, as a teacher, as human as we are, we have this we have this our personal problem. When we come to the class, students are having also their problems. If you don't have the qualities of somebody, teachers are called second parent, surrogate parents of these students. If you don't have the quality of a caring mother, of a nurturing mother, you would not really understand. You would not really adjust yourself to the scenario. But Alhamdulillah, something in Islam have taught me that everything happens for a purpose. Why these students are misbehaving in the class? It's not that they hate me. It's not that uh, they just want to. It's not that they just want to to show that they are. Uh, by the way, excuse me. Sorry for that. I was, um, I was trying to to charge my phone. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um. So again, I would like to to continue that. Um. Of course, uh, something something was developed in me, and somehow I tried to to understand my students and to know that uh, there are certain issues that they are facing. That's why they could not concentrate. For example, in their class, they could not participate in whatever activities and that something at home might be the cause of why they are behaving. So, yes, that's happening. And um, you know what? Um, 
I, I did not have any experience uh, teaching with Muslim youth. I'm only have I was only having such experience of uh, with with the non-Muslim youth. So the challenges that I see among my students way back then were various. A lot of problems that they are facing. And uh, somehow I have been observing, I was observing them, uh, somehow the, the value, there are certain Filipino values that parang nag-deteriorate, really, it's deteriorating, especially that having that uh, values on um, respect. And yeah, that's, that's happening. I don't know why is it that uh, it manifested on our students. Like, for example, if, if, if I'm not their subject teacher, they would not greet me. Good morning, madam. Good afternoon, madam. But if I am their teacher, they would really say, good afternoon, madam. Even how many times they meet each other along the corridor or wherever in the school, they would keep on saying, Good afternoon, madam. Good morning, madam. So that was the, the kind of attitude that I have observed among our youth, the non-Muslim youth by that uh, instance. So not only that, the, the value of being courteous or being respectful was not really embedded much in their heart. So... There was really a change, and of course, um, when when we were we were trying to understand our students, it somehow uh, traced back to the family. When we tried to investigate why, for example, a certain student act this way, and then later we realized and we learned that. Um, for example, he has a bro uh, he is into a broken family, or that his mom or their parents are not uh, in their home. Might be they are working in the city and would just go back on weekends. So you see, uh, there is really a great impact. When, for example, the parents are not there with the youth, with the teenagers, especially on their growing years. Of course, there are cases by which we could say that there are also youngsters who are really strong enough, despite of not having parents, let's say they are orphaned at a younger age, they were still able to manage themselves being a good student or being a good person there are there are students there are teenagers like that but mostly um i would say a greater percentage of our youth they are really uh, being bothered by what's happening inside the family especially when parents uh leave them to the care of the grandparents. And alhamdulillah, um, we, we were able, uh, for example, me as an advisor with the rest of the advisors, we were able to come up with some activities that would really help our students. Of course, uh, we don't have much time to deal with their issues, but there is what we call an activity done by a, an advisor, let's say, um, meeting the parent, but sometimes parent would not come and uh, face the issue that their uh, children are, face, uh, are facing. And then sometimes the, they would just leave the, as if some of the parents would just, leave to the teacher the disciplinary action that are, for example, to be implemented to the youth. 
And that should not happen because, for example, we as teachers, we are really careful. Sometimes parents, you know, uh, our dear brothers and sisters and our uh, kababayan, sometimes parents would tell, for example, to me, they would tell, uh, pwede mo yang, uh, paluin mo na lang yan, madam. Para bang, uh, they would allow me to, to hurt their, uh, their children or their um, teenager. But of course, I have my own family. I don't want to, I don't want to be violating the law, hurting the, the, the students. We know very well that our students are protected by our law. So I cannot just imagine why there are parents that who I would really as if uh, leave their responsibilities towards the teacher, of which teachers are already overburdened by a lot of tasks in the school, as well as just imagine facing a lot of students in one day and aside from uh, works that we are even uh, bringing home. So we as teachers are really stressed with this kind of uh, scenario, uh, more so um, with, the, with the activities that we are in the, the school. So um, I, was, I, was really, uh, I was really thinking of something on how can I possibly do something to face bravely these challenges that I have been facing. Why? The students that I was facing then, they don't value education. You know what? Uh, parang ang teacher ang palaging tinitingnan ng mga estudyante, especially if there is an exam. Mapapansin mo, Everyone is uh, attending to their papers, answering their uh, questionnaire. You would really notice among the students, sino yung gustong mangupya? Sino yung naghihintay kailan pumapasahan ng sagot? And of course, ako as a teacher, I would not really allow my student to do such dishonesty, pangungupya. It's not the kind of value that we don't, uh, it's not the kind of value that we want our students to grow up with. So, anong ginagawa ko, especially if there is an exam, I would really move around. I would let them realize that I am watching them, that I would not tolerate them cheating. But you know what? We, for example, I am only one in that setting, in that situation. What about when these children, when the students come home? Are the parents also teaching the students the value of honesty? That's the big question that came to my mind. The teachers are trying their best to mold the students, even these are not our own children. You know, mostly of the teachers, we don't have much time with our children, our own children, but we have time with children of others. And that's reality. And that's really what is happening. So we try our best to inculcate upon our students those values that would help them become a better person. These are values that would uh, that they would be carrying by the time they would be out in the four walls of the classroom, by the time that they would be outside our perimeter, by the time that they would be employed. Those values would be embedded in their hearts and minds, and hopefully this become 
something that would drive them to do better, to become a better person. But I don't know if this is being, um, I would use the term, being follow up by parents. Of course, there are a lot of parents who are very good parents. There are really parents who really into the, the they are really a responsible parent. And, but sad to note also that there are parents that because of some circumstances, for example, because of work, they could not, um, they could not attend to their children. They could not be present with their children to tap their shoulder whenever they are feeling down. So there are certain scenarios that happening that we understand that uh, would contribute really to the kind of behavior that is developed in a student or on a child. But alhamdulillah, um, what I have observed, of course, this is not a general observation. I just see this. Among, for example, even brothers and sisters in Islam. When I was in one of the Islamic centers in, in Cebu, and I happened to stay with them for a uh, for few days, at nighttime, for example, or daytime, of course, uh, during the pandemic, students are not in the school, but instead at home to to continue with their studies, alhamdulillah. But with the modules, with those, um, with those materials that they have at hand, you know, I have observed even among the Muslim community, of course, I'm not uh, generalizing this. I am only saying what I have observed with few uh, instances that, even as the parent or a sister or a brother is a Muslim, they are tolerating the younger generation to do something which is not really a good uh, behavior that they have to develop. Like, for example, answering those modules, they just allow their elder sister to work for them. Can you see the difference? When I was a teacher, I would really move around to check and to let my students realize that I am there. I, I don't allow cheating. But at this time, I don't know if you have been observing this, but I see this before my eyes that there are siblings would really tolerate their younger brother, elementary at that, to just ignore his task. He's just playing games with the uh, with his with a cell phone, while the elder sister is uh, answering the the task, the papers given by the teacher. And of course, can you just imagine what kind of student or pupil that one I have seen is this the kind of is this the kind of training that we want our younger Muslims to be exposed is this the kind of exposure that they uh, we want them to have what kind of citizens they would be in the future characters are building up in them what skills do you think are they developing there are a lot of skills very good skills that have to be developed in us in a students for example let's say in mathematics one of the skills that we want our students to have is this the analytical thinking skills and other skills, or that the communication skills. These are few of the skills that would help them if these are developed in our Muslim youth, 
they would become better citizen in our community or in our country. For example, uh, in communication skill, this is really basic. This really needed when you are at work. Even if you are owning your own business, you must know how to communicate with your customers. You must know how to communicate with your vendors. You must know how to communicate with people around you, with those business partners you will be having. But what are we training with our youth? Are we trying to, to inculcate in them the value of being open, being expressive in writing, in speaking? Are we the kind of adults the, whom our younger generation look up to as model? Are we doing this? Are we trying our best to become their role models? Of course, we're not perfect. But are we possessing something of whom our younger generation would look up to, would imitate? Our youngers, our youngsters, our teenagers, those young people at our home, they always look up with their role model. Remember, whatever you say, they would copy what you are saying how you act on certain situation, they would imitate you. How you respond to a situation, they would observe that. And somehow, they can apply this wherever they are and with whom or with anybody. So let's be somebody. We try to be somebody, a role model to our younger generations, especially we are in a community with non-Muslims. Remember that as our youth go out in our home, they are exposed with a lot of challenges outside. And with these experiences might be, they don't share this with us as they go back home. How would we know what kind of experiences they, ha they were having outside? How would we know that they are already being discriminated by people around them? Especially for Muslim teenagers, when they go out, uh, I'm talking, for example, for uh, the Muslim teenager, the ladies, they would be wearing their hijab as they go out. And can you just imagine everyone or many people around him are non-Muslim? She might be experiencing, let's say, uh, name callings or whatever exposure that would um, somehow feel her down. And then when she comes back home, are we the kind of parent? Are we the kind of adult that asks how was their experience outside? Are we the kind of, uh, are we that nurturing parent to our youngsters? Or are we that loving guardian to these uh, teenagers who once when they go outside are exposed to a lot of different uh, scenarios of which outside Islam. And you know, our youth, our teenagers, they don't have much experience to be tough in facing life's problem. They might easily give up. They might not have the courage to tell you that they are experiencing this and such from somebody, for example, and uh, they would just be keeping this inside them. Can you just imagine the pain that they are keeping inside? If we as adult Muslims in the society would not dare to be caring with our youth. Just a simple question, for example, Musta, how was your activity outside? Who was with you? What kind of activities that you were into? 
And not only the kind of exposure that they have. For example, uh, when they're at home, are we the kind of parent or are we the kind of guardian? Are we the kind of sibling or are we the kind of adult? Most team the guide them on what kind of activities that they have to get involved with or into. For example, at this time, most of our students are really exposed to social media. Have you observed how long are this use of hours spending time on the social media? Have we ever dared to check on the kind of activities that they are having on that social media? Are we checking on their activities? Are we making follow-ups on how far have they gone with their studies? Have they answered, for example, their modules? Or are we the kind of uh, adults training our youth for life skill? These are very important skills that they need to learn. Are this kind of uh, children that we're having too dependent on us, even in the washing of the dishes, or even in the, the laundry of clothes? Are this left to us? So we need to, to constantly we need to constantly look into the activities of our youth, of our youngsters at home. Why? We believe that youth are our hope in the future, inshallah. We adults need to do something to somehow train them with not only with how we, they deal with life, but as well, we need also to, to, to teach them on how they would face, for example, whenever they are down. As Muslim, we could inculcate in them, in their hearts, that whenever you have problem, my dear, or my, uh, my baby, you need to have some dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we such kind of adult that teaches them to, to face life and to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And um, of course, there are a lot of spiritual aspects that we could share with them. Uh, for example, uh, teach our youngsters that Life really is full of challenges. Let's uh, give them an assurance that we are somebody, somebody that they can lean on, that we can be there whenever they need us. For example, on their time of uh, uh, there are there are children or there are um, youngsters who easily give up. What kind of what kind of uh, what kind of uh, teachings that you may uh, you may remind or what kind of values that you may remind with our youngsters? Might be you can tell them about um, having sabr, have, having patience. Uh, when can we say this, that our students, our youngsters are giving up? For example, they are facing a math problem. Of course, uh, uh, there are also parents who, uh, who don't love mathematics. Um, but even if you don't love mathematics, you still can guide your children. For example, um, you can guide them that uh, you have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to ask for his guidance. You have to ask, you make dua. So these are little things that we can, um, as if, uh, this is our investment. This is something that we can 
um, put into their hearts and minds. As they grow up, they would eventually be recalling whatever positive values that we have uh, uh, orient them. And then, inshallah, they would also be using this in situations that they would be facing. Yes. And that would be a good, um, that would be a good practice that which that they can uh, apply in their lives. Um, I would like to, re by the way, excuse me, um, would like to remind uh, Derek Carl. I think Brother Dawood is messaging. He he called up a few minutes ago. I don't know if he's at the backstage and would like to join in. Maybe you can allow them, whoever is at the backstage, uh, Derek Carl. Because I've noticed that uh, Brother Dawood was calling. He might be interested to join with the program, inshallah. Okay, going back to our discussion. Um, of course, uh, there are instances of which um, we see unproductive time of our uh, teenagers. They're not so keen with how they spend with their time. Maybe they are just playing online games and uh, that would be uh, eating up much of their time. Maybe we can do something to encourage our a teenager to shift their activity. And not that the, we are totally depriving them of their happiness, but somehow as uh, adults, we can guide them on uh, being productive from time to time with their, uh, with their day, inshallah. So, and what about yung mga exposure of our teenagers with others? What kind of activities are we giving them? Do we give our teenagers activities by which they are also, um, let's say, oriented with how their peers are, are doing? Or we are keeping our teenagers at home? So our teenagers need to interact with their peers all as well they need to enjoy the time with their peers uh, they need to laugh out loud they need to of course um we have as uh, as adults or as parents we need also to monitor who are they are uh, going with when they go outside and we have to make them uh understand that there are rules that have to be followed at home of which the when in case they are they are violating those rules they would be of course be punished and you know ano mga punishment na pwede ninyong ma mai ano mai mai impose at home and they need to understand that um as parents you have set rules that they need to follow not that our teenagers, our younger Muslims be uh, doing things uh, which wala uh, tayong akalam-alam. We need to. We need to know. We really need to guide our our teenagers. We really need to 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 know um, to know more of them. Uh, we need to know their activities. Who are their who are these people that they are going to, so that we would understand that uh, they are doing well, or that if in case that we know that they are um, going with some teenagers with hindi kaya aya yung mga activities, we need to remind them from time to time to as much as possible keep distance with such people because that would not help them as a citizen or as an individual, lalo na pagiging Muslim, inshallah. And um, are we also giving opportunities to our 
teenagers or our generations that um, aside from exposure with others or with their peers, are we giving, uh, do we have programs that um, would really challenge their themselves? Are we exposing our teenagers to activities that as if they are simulating the activities of the adult, how would they, for example, uh, tackle certain issues or concerns? And of course, in a simulation or in a make-believe, in a role play, for example, these activities can be done uh, during uh, uh, activities by which Muslims uh, gather together, especially with uh, the same peers or with, of course, the guidance of the adult Muslim, inshallah, for them to know that in reality, they need to somehow know what are adults' activity and how would they prepare themselves for that kind of scenario or situation that they might be experiencing in the future, inshallah. So expose, expose our teenagers uh, on this kind of activities by which you can plan and inshallah, I don't know if whatever activities that you are having in your community, you know what, uh, in my place, uh, not much Muslims here, alhamdulillah. So um, I don't have much exposure on what kind of activities fellow Muslim brothers and sisters are giving to the youngsters. But inshallah, I hope that our brothers and sisters, especially those who are uh, the one calling a little while ago, I think that was uh, Brother Dawood. I hope Brother Dawood could join me here to share something because I know Brother Dawood is also handling an Islamic center. Maybe uh, he could shed light to us on what these uh, activities that they're giving to our youngsters. Uh, Brother Dawood, if you have, uh, if you have been um, following this program of ours this afternoon, uh, please... Um, Use the, the link that I have forwarded to you on your on your inbox, or you may check on the the group chat that we have with this pagusapan natin GC. You may link on the uh, the streamyard and be able to join me here. Here, especially, uh, we really want to know uh, how far have you gone through with these activities for your. Uh, for for group of Muslims out there, particularly the younger generation of Muslims, and we would like to know um, what are the adults in the community are doing. What activities are you preparing for this uh, group or this sec uh, this uh, group of uh, youngsters? As I have said, um, my exposure with the youngsters is different from what you are experiencing especially with those handling islamic center you're dealing with a lot of muslim youngsters but my experiences that i have been sharing here is only based on what i have for 26 years with the public school students alhamdulillah inshallah but somehow uh, there is a commonality among the experiences of our teenagers and of course um these commonalities are, of course, uh, um, very, very, um, very clear to us, or these are manifested, or these are shown uh, to us by our teenagers. And um, if there are these challenges that our students or our youngsters are experiencing, how are we tackling this? How are we preparing our youngsters? To become somebody that really is brave enough to face the challenges. Alhamdulillah, um, you know, our experiences as adults cannot be, um, cannot be the same. Or we cannot put our experiences uh, on the shoes of our youngsters. We need to we need to understand that our generation this time is different from what we grow up with. We have different uh, exposures. We we play different games. 
uh, compared sa mga games that they are they are exposed with or we exposed to this time maybe those uh, brothers and sisters of mine especially um for those uh early early 70s uh generation um we have played kinds of games that are really for uh developing our leadership skill there is what we call the concept of teamwork teamwork but uh what about our teenagers now are we exposing them to the kind of uh games that would develop their sense of being uh in a team are these the kind of exposures that we give them or we just uh, let our youngster experience the solidarity of being in a room facing the phone. That should not happen, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, because um, if we if we just let them do whatever they please, somehow we would be facing the consequences. Number one. Uh, we don't have hold, for example, if you just allow your teenagers to do activities without, your, you, without you monitoring them, in time will come that we will really suffer the consequences. And that has been prevalent. That is very clear that is happening in our surroundings. Um, and that is true, especially our teenagers are dealing or interacting with non-Muslims. Might be when they left home, we see them, especially for our young ladies, we see them wearing their hijab. But maybe you did not check the backpack. When, for example, uh, she tells you, Mama, I'll be out with my friends. Um, and then you see something, for example, that they're having backpack, but you did not check the backpack. And might be what's in the backpack. Maybe she is bringing a long pants. Or maybe she is bringing something that would really uh, uh, look, uh, would make her look sexy. For example, there are a lot of instances that might happen. There are, uh, these are possibilities, especially that if we don't check our youngsters. So when they go out, for example, we see that they are in hijab, they are wearing their uh, long dresses, but as soon as they arrive with their peers, they change this to something too sexy for people to see. So we have to be very, we have to be very clear with our rules, especially on what to be followed with, uh, with uh, what to be followed by our teenagers. So parents, let's be firm in handling with our uh, youngsters. We must always remember that they are our responsibility. That not only that our responsibility is giving them the food, the clothing, the shelter, but it is our responsibility to guide them spiritually to mold them into the kind of individual that would become a potential contributor to the progress of our society. Let's do our responsibilities with, with a pure heart, with the happiness. And of course, uh, this would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do something for the good of our uh, teenagers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Lenny. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining me, Sister Lenny. So Sister Lenny, can you? Ah, alhamdulillah. And oh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alaikum salam. Okay. <laughs> Kumusta po kayo, brother and sisters? Alhamdulillah. 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 Sister. Alhamdulillah. 
<laughs> Alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, you are here. Welcome to our program. And um, I was I was uh, sharing a uh, brother and sisters um, with the the viewers on what were my experiences as a teacher in a public school before I was a Muslim and then when I became a Muslim. So, of course, my experience was with regards to non-Muslim, how these non-Muslim teenagers behave in a public or in a classroom setting. But um, I would like you to share, uh, before you share, uh, I would like you to greet, for example, your if you want to greet somebody or a group of uh, of you may you may you may start brother Dawood. Lala. Saka daw kayo ron. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sa lahat ng ating mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, especially at sa mga kababayan natin, magandang gabi sa inyo lahat, sa mga nanonood. Alhamdulillah. Um itong topic na to tungkol sa paano natin pangalagaan uh, ng ating mga kabataan. Ah, uh, upon of my experience, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always giving me a chance to brought Islam in the school. You know, kasi actually on this uh, time na mga nasa grade 10, grade 11, grade 12 na yung mga bata, especially on my, uh, my side, uh, minsan na imbitahan na nila ako sa kanilang classroom para mag uh, ano nang uh, explain about Islam. You know, kasi may mga topic sa loob ng, ng education ngayon ah uh, kasama ang uh, religion natin kasama yung religion so alhamdulillah in that in that part ang ginagawa ko sa mga anak ko ay want ay, hindi ko sila yung ini-expectuhan matindi hindi ang ginagawa ko sa kanila pinapaalala ko sa kanila kung ano yung karapatan ng uh, Islam sa kanila hindi lang ako nagbilang isang parent kundi yung pananampalataya sa kanila kasi Lagi ko napalala, ang, ang isa sa pinapalala ko palagi sa aking mga anak, ang Islam ay hindi relihiyon lamang. Kung hindi ito ay daan ng buhay. Ibig sabihin, pamantayan, basihan ng panang pamumuhay. No? Kaya kailangan, ang gawa mo rito, yung nauukol na at bibigyan ka ng pagpapala ng alas sa Yun ang hinahanggad natin palagi. So, pag kasi ang anak natin, kapo ang anak natin, pag sinabihan natin ng mga bagay na Masyara tayong six, pagdidahan natin siya, pagdidahan natin ano. Ang bata, nagkakaroon siya lalo ng curiosity sa kanyang bibig. At uh, nag-isip siya lalo na parang magiging wild. So, ang ginagawa ko, on my, on my side, uh, kinikwentuhan ko sila tungkol sa pamamaraan ng ating Propeta Muhammad Salitam. At pinalalaan ko sila sa dapat nilang dapat katakutan sa babala ng ating pananampalataya. Not on my side, not on my personal na magalit ka, magagalit ako, ano, hindi. Kasi kailangan dito, makita nila yung paano mo dadalhin yung Islam sa kanila. At paano rin nila gagamitin yung Islam sa'yo. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, ganun na nangyayari sa amin. Kaya laging masaya, maano yung pamilya ko, yung mga lads, especially yung mga anak ko. So, hindi nila nakakalimutan yung sila, kahit tabi din sila sa mga barkada nila, nakikita nila na meron silang pamantayan. Uh, This is the very important to us. No? Kasi pagka yung pagdududa, ang um, tinuturo ko sa kanila palagi, yung pagduru, pagdududa ay isang napakalain kasalanan. Pag-iisipan natin sila na baka kung ano yung kanilang nasa loob ng kanilang uh, anong gamit nila o anong gagawin nila. Kundi ang lagi ko pinapalala sa kanila, whatever you action, you pay it. Babayaran mo yun. Either mabuti o masama. No? Sa harap ng iyong Panginoon, babayaran mo siya. Para sa harap ni Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, magbabayad ka. Kung mabuti, meron kang baraka, may gantipalak. Kung masama, parusa ka. So, that's it. No? So, doon sila nagbabalan. Kasi, maraming mga, actually, marami tayong mga kwento, mga hadith, ng Propeta Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, na kung babasahin ng iba, parang extreme. Hindi ito totoo, no? hindi nangyaya, hindi pwede mangyari. Pero dahil may mga proof, evidence na mga mangyari, so what, what for pa yung yung mitiyama? Kaya dapat mong paniwala. Kasi yung mga evidence yung mga nagdaan at saka yung mga dumating. 
nung binigyan niya ng mga ebidensya yung mga bagay niya. So, ganun. So, yun ang, pag yun ang tumanim sa bata, yung bata lagi nag-iisip na, o nga, baka maparusahan ako na hindi naman ang papa ko magbabayad sa akin. Kasi, November, pagdating natin sa araw ng paghukom, walang magulang, walang kapatid, walang asawa, walang anak na kayang saluhin ka. So, kaya, dapat, ang galaw mo o ang yung gagawin ay sisiguraduhin mo na kahit pa paano, hindi ka masasaktan sa araw ng paghukom. Alhamdulillah. Hindi lang pa si Sir. Napakaganda niyan, Brother Dawood. Alhamdulillah. So, um, sana um, ma, ma, matanim talaga sa isipan damdamin ng mga kabataan ang ganitong mga pagtuturo sa mga magulang naging maging gabay na wa nila ito lalo na sa kanilang paglaki and we want really to envision the kind of youth that we have as uh, somebody ba na contributor talaga for the progress of our muslim umma alhamdulillah inshallah and what about sister lenny i believe sister lenny you have um four children is that so Ilan ba yung mga anak mo? Ha? Pito. Pito. Ah, Seven. pito. <laughs> okay. Paano mo naipalaki ang pitong mga anak? Alam na ito. Ano, na, ano yung? Ito. Ang, ang ano lang dyan sa ano. Na, kailangan tayong mga nanay, meron tayong sinasabing decent conversation to us every children. Mahinaho na pakikipag-usap sa kanila at ating ipakita sa kanila na tayo ay may responsibilidad sa kanila. Na ang responsibilidad na ito ay nanggagaling sa puso natin. Hindi basta-basta nanay ka lang na pariwara ka, kung saan-saan ka, ang isi mo talaga na sa kanila. At ipakita mo kung ano talaga ang ginagawa ng isang ina sa kanilang mga anak. Dahil ang mga kabataan ngayon sa panahon ngayon, napakahirap silang anuhin. Pero pamagitan ng pakikipag-usap mo sa kanila, na ipabatid mo sa kanila ang reliyon, dahil sa panahon ngayon, ang reliyon, hindi nila basta-basta natatanggap yan. Pero kung magpapakita ka ng katatagan, kasipagan, tiwala, lalambot rin ang kanilang mga kaisipan. Ako sa mga anak ko, ginagawa ko sa kanila, ipinababatid ko sa kanila ang lahat ng ginagawa ko. Pinakikita ko ang tungkulin ko sa kanila. Kahit ako'y nag-iisa lang sa ano, sa kasalukuyan. Kaya, alhamdulillah, kahit ako'y nagkaganito, hindi ako pinabayan ng Allah, hindi ako, hindi ako tumalikod, hindi ako, sinusuko ko lahat sa kanya, sapagkat ako ina, sa akin galing ang lahat ng aking mga anak. At ganun din sa mga ka, sa kapaligiran ko, nakikita ko na ang mga kabataan sa ngayon ay wala silang sawang mag-ano sa kanilang ginagawa. Subalit, kung talaga tayong mga nanay, meron tayong malasakit sa kanila, hindi sila liliko ng landas. Pakita natin na tayo may tungkulin sa kanila. Kausapin natin sila Bilang kaibigan, bilang magulang, bilang nanay, bilang lola, at bilang mga kasama, kasama natin sa loob ng bahay. Ganun lang ang ginagawa ko, sister, sa mga anak ko. Nakatapos sila sa hirap na ginagawa ko sa kanila. Kaya, alhamdulillah, iba pa rin talaga ang merong reliyon na naggagabay ng mabuti sa atin. Kaya, alhamdulillah, ngayon, nakatapos sila sa pamagitan ng paghihirap namin sa pamagitan ng pag-aalaga ko sa kanila nandito na kahit pagod na pagod ka kahit may mga asawa na inaasikaso mo pa rin yun lang talaga ang teknik ng buhay bilang isang ina sa mga anak para hindi sila mapariwara Alhamdulillah sis <laughs> Alhamdulillah um Very inspiring yung story mo, sister. Having seven children, yet you were alone raising them to be 
a good children. Alhamdulillah. And yeah. Sister Mona Lee, uh, how do you deal with the the challenges uh, that you are facing with the, uh, for example, yung sa mga pamangkin mo? Uh, Salamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh, Sis Elaine, um, Adeleni, uh, Brother Dawood, tsaka kahit wala si Attorney, Salamu alaikum Attorney, Attorney Noor, uh, um, ang bumubuo nitong programa to, uh, Sir Ismail Abaya, Derek Carl, Salamu alaikum sa inyong lahat. Um, na sa akin po, uh, wala akong anak, wala akong single, pero uh, uh, ginagawa kong role model ang sarili ko para maipakita din sa mga pamangkin ko sa kahit sinong uh, nasa paligid ko na uh, kailangan, ding, ano, kailangan ding ipapakita mo kapaano ka susundin ng mga bata kung mismo ang sarili mo hindi mo ginagawa yung mga 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 dapat sa Islam, uh, mga tungkulin makikita ng mga bata, syempre yung mga bata ngayon iba na. Uh, uh, marami silang mga ginagawang uh, nalisis na ng landas pero kailangan pang gabayan. Gabayan ng maayos para nila malaman kung ano talaga yung uh, salitang Islam. So ngayon, uh, tayong mga matatanda, na may alam na kahit konting paano, ipapakita natin para sundin tayo ng mga bata. So kahit na sa panahon ngayon, wala nang eh, merong mga mga uh, merong mga mga anong tawag nitong merong mga <coughs> mga nangyayaring mga ibang kahit sa, sa ganito ng sipan ng na hindi tama at this ma, ma, mapapayuhan natin sila mapapayuhan pinapayuhan pa pamangkin ko may 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 marami, marami din akong pamangkin na hindi nagihijab pero sa pinapakita ko sabi ko uh, kailangan kasi hindi para sa akin ito kasi sa Ay, ano sa tayo naman lahat uh, uh, para sa kanila din para at least uh, malalaman nilang malalaman nila yung ano talaga yung ano ng Islam yung um, karapatan ng Islam at saka yung mga tradisyon costume costumes na mga ano uh, beliefs at saka talagang yung talaga pinapa-implement ko sa kanila yung pagsasala ng five times kasi importante yun kasi yun ang yun talaga ang sinusundi uh, obligasyon natin at saka yung paghihijab hmm. Kaya hindi yan pwedeng mawala kasi yun yun ang baon natin sa uh, kabilang buhay. Yun lang. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah at uh, hindi naman masyado. Kasi sa community namin, uh, lahat naman mga Muslim, uh, lahat pag every time may adan, uh, every wakto, every time ng prayer, uh, mga kabataan dito, alhamdulillah, nag nagsasala naman. Is nakikita nila ang community, ang community kasi, nakikita nila yung mga elders din na gumagawa din ng uh, uh, every time wakto na pupunta sa masjid. Kaya uh, parang ano na din, maganda din dito ang kabataan kasi uh, parang... Um, Uh, ma, pa, ma, uh, mayroon silang uh, magandang modelo dito sa ano. Sa every time naman pag uh, sa pagdating ng fasting kahit yung mga bata na uh, mga na, naliligaw ng landas pagdating ng fasting po lahat ng mga bata dito uh, nagpa-fasting po. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for that Sister Mona Leaf. Alhamdulillah. So With the presence sa mga pamangkin mo, at least, alhamdulillah, hindi mo sila pinababayaan. You are still there to to support their parents, alhamdulillah. And ano yung mga masabi nating mga activities na ginagawa po ng ating Muslim communities sa mga respective areas po ninyo? Of course, uh, we, we, we know Islam is not just uh, praying five times a day. But this is a way of life, kagaya na nabanggit kanina po ni, ano, ni Brother Dawood. Ano po ba mga activities po ninyo nakakater po for the wholesome development of our youth, Brother Dawood? Uh, dito sa amin, ng activities namin, medyo hindi namin hinigkita yung, yung uh, pag, ano, pag uh, lalabas ng yung bang uh, ganito. Kasi... Um, 
dito sa amin, konti lang kami Muslim sa bawat area. Like, like, like me, dito sa barangay namin, kami lang ang Muslim. Kami ang pamilya lang. No? So kami ang nag- kailangan maging modelo nila. Makita nila yung mga relationship, yung mga nilito. Kaya yung activities, ginagawa namin, pag mayroon tayo, liba, kapag dumarating sa atin yung id, iniimbitahan namin sila, binibigyan namin sila ng pagkakataon na makasali. Ano. At pinakikita namin, pinakikita ng mga anak ko sa kanila kung paano yung pamamaraan. No? So yun yung mga activities na ginagawa namin. And then, kung mayroon activities sa barangay, pinasasali ko yung mga anak ko. Pinasasali ko ron. Pero ang dala nila, yung ano, pakikipag-relationship ng kasama yung attitude ng bilang isang listing, bilang isang mananampalatay. No, kasi alam naman natin na ang kabataan ngayon ay puro alasan, joke dito, joke doon, mga, yung mga sinasabi ng bibig, hindi na magaganda. No? So, gina, hindi, na, hindi mo ma, ano, maiwasan yun na hindi makasama ng mga anak na yun. Lagi sa community ng kasabi sa Pilipinas na ang nakapalibot ay hindi naman lahat mga muslim, mga mananampalataya. Alhamdulillah nga doon kala sister dahil puro mga kapatid sa pananampalataya ang kasama na bibinig pa ito dito sa amin. Kaya kailangan dito sa amin makita yung reality na yung gawa ng yung gagawin ng mga, ng mga kasama mo sa bahay. So yun, so, gano'n ang gagawa namin. So, kasama sila, makikijoin, pero pagdating din sa mga bawal, mga ano, yung sabi nila na ito ay mayroon sa amin, ano, ganito mga kondisyon eh. At saka sa amin sa bahay, pinag-uusapan namin lahat ng mga bayo At saka hindi magiging bayo So, gano'n. You know, Misa kami nag-sponsor ng palaro. Misa kami rin naman yung uh, nagbibigay ng... At tulad yung nawa namin nun, nagkawa kami dito ng uh, Islamic Symposium Medical Mission. No, medical Mission wow. Islamic Symposium. So, yung mga anak ko, at saka yung mga anak ng mga kapatid natin, mga nandiyo dito sa Bicol, tulong-tulong. No, sila yung nag-assist ng mga kabataan, yung mga nagpapatuli, sila yung mga nagpapabunot ng isin, yung gano'n. So, gano'n. Yung mga matatanda naman, yun naman yung mga nag-aatay sa mga matanda habang nakaupo, pinikwentuhan ito po Islam, niya pinapakita yung, ano, yung kagandahan ng ating panapataya, yung ganda. Gano'n kami dito mag-activities, mga outreach program, punta sa eskwela, ano kaya punta sa isang lugar, mag-medical mission, Pero, alhamdulillah. You know? So, yung napapraktis yung mga anak namin sa development ng activities na para sa Islam, you know, hindi lang yun na, na, kaya hindi sila basa-basa na i-injan you know, ng mga kabataan sa panahon niya na puro kalukuhan, puro lakwatsa, puro kung ano-ano po siya gawa, wasting time. Kasi sabi, sabi ako sila palagi, mahalaga sa atin ang bawat araw, ang bawat minuto, bawat oras. Kasi kung hindi natin alam, Kung kailan tayo babawian ni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ng buhay. So, ano ang ating inihanda sa araw na yaon? So, don't waste your time. Baka magkamali ka, magkaroon ka na malayang pagkakasala in the future. Yun, pinakatari niyo sa mga anak ko. Alhamdulillah. At saka din sa mga kabataan na kasama-kasama na yung palay. Kaya, pagka tinawag mo tungkol sa activities ng Islam, pagdadawa, pag-outreach uh, program, Dati niyang kagad yan, nakikita. Alhamdulillah. Doon nila nakikita ng mga kabataan na hindi Muslim. Na yung relationship ng mga, ng mga kabataan natin sa Islam. Ay maganda. Dahil ang ginagawa ay yung activities na may kabuluhan. You know? So yun ang aming uh, ginagawa palagi. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, magandang exposure mm-hmm. ng mga kabataan ninyo dyan, Brother Dawood, though maliit lamang kayo dyan, ano? At least mm-hmm. may exposure sila na may improve yung kanilang skill, like the leadership skill, with the presence of these activities, like the symposium yung binanggit mm-hmm. mo, yung mga medical mission, o kaya sa inyong pagdadawa. So, ano yung mga ginagawa ninyo, ano yung mga pina-expose niya sa kanila with those activities that you have mentioned. Alhamdulillah, I believe that this will be uh, implanted in their hearts and minds, their responsibilities towards the towards others na rin. And then, uh, lalaki, lalaki sila with this kind of uh, activities or orientation po. Nawa po yung mga um, 
magkakaroon talaga sila ng uh, uh, magandang giya with you as parent, uh, with the adult in the community. Alhamdulillah, insyaAllah. And what about Sister Lenny? Hmm. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alam ang ginagawa ko naman sister ng activity ko pagdating ng ano sa may pinupuntahan kasi ako ng mosque yun ay eh, ano mayroong drum madrasa ang ginagawa ko doon pag nandoon ako sa madrasa ako ang nagluluto ng pangmerienda at tinuturuan namin yung mga bata parang livelihood kung paano gumawa ng ganito ng katulad ng paggagawa ng puto ganyan tapos Tinuturo din namin, meron akong kasing kasamang sister na nagtuturo sa kanila. Like ng mga Arabic lesson. Siya ang nagtuturo at ako naman, inatas, inatas niya ako sa pagluluto. Sinasabay na namin yung pagtuturo sa kanila. Sa mga kabataan, mga anak ng mga ano, balik Islam, mga Maranao, sa, sa moskin, sa ano niya, sa masjid na bahay yun eh. Kaya tuwing aid, nandun ako at tuwing nagpapasting ang mga ano mga muslim ako yung nagluluto ng iftar nila para nga sa kanilang ano ay mayroon naman akong alam sa pagluluto kaya ina-apply ko sa kanila yung nalalaman ko sa pagluluto kaya pagdating ng ano mga ganyang activities tinatawag na pinapupunta to yung iftar tapos umuwi na ako dito kasi sa amin ako lang ang muslim kaya yung sakripisyo kong iyon, inaano ko sa kanila doon sa masjid na yun tuwing, ano, tuwing magkakaroon ng ano, fasting, lalo na sa buwan ng Ramadan. Kasi ano pa lang naman akong Muslim. Almost ano lang ako, seven years pa lang niya ako nag-Muslim. Tapos naiwan pa ako sa ere. Kaya alam do nila, nagpupunta ako ng pwede kong ma, ano, ma, ma, para matuto din ako sa Islam kasi gusto ko talaga masaliksik yun. Kaya activities ko sa kanila, ang pagtuturo, pagluluto, pagbibigay ng sakripisyo sa kapwa ko, brother and sister. Kaya, alhamdulillah, hanggang ngayon, kahit pandemic, pag sinabing, sis, punta ka dito, magduto ka ng ganito. O, kung kaya ko, kung hindi ma, ano ang pakiramdam ko, okay, pupunta ako doon. Kaya, alhamdulillah, eto kahit pa paano nakakaano pa rin ko pero ginagawa ko pa rin dito pag nag aid nagluluto ako para sa pamilya ko para malaman nila kung ano talaga yung alituntunin ng isang muslim isang balik islam o sinasabing pilipino muslim kaya yung mga anak ko nakikipag-cooperate din sila sa akin na o oh, mama sabing ganun ng isa id nyo ngayon anong ano mo ano ni prepare mo yan. Share-share sila kahit hindi sila mga Muslim. Ako lang kasi ang Muslim. Pero, pinapakain ko sila tapos namimigay ako sa kapitbahay ng pagkain. Ganun lang ang activities ko sis. Pero ang limang sala, hindi ko talaga na ano. Pag nag na, yung cellphone ko, sabi, Uy, Lola, pray na, sala na, sabi ng mga anak ko. Alhamdulillah. Kaya, supported sila sa akin sa pagiging Muslim ko. Alhamdulillah, yun lang po, sister. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I can relate to your sharing, sister. Ganon din ang yayari sa akin, alhamdulillah. Especially yung sila na mismo nung papaalala na, oh, ano, oh. prayer time. <laughs> And oh. napakaganda <laughs> sa, ano, sa damdamin na they're reminding oh. us, though they're not oh. Muslims, but yet oh. sa puso't isipan nila, ano ano ba ang Islam? Ano ba dapat gawin ng isang Muslim? Nakaka ano talaga 'yan. Ah. Uh, pagbigay. Yes. Lang din wala nang tiwala lang tiwala. And then maganda rin yung activities na ginagawa mo sis like uh, uh, you are you have been training especially sa mga youth yung uh, ano ba sa pagluluto for livelihood. Mm. Alhamdulillah, mm. nakaka, ano talaga yan, um, mm. nakakatulong for life skill ng ating mga kabataan. Mm. What about Sister Mona Leaf? Um, I remember one time, may in-share ka sa akin na nagawa mo sa pamangkin mo, of which may, uh, napakaganda talaga yung, pwede mo ba itong ma-share, Sister Mona Leaf? Uh, yeah. 
Marami ka, of course, mga pamangkin. Ano. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi, uh, ano po, uh, dito po sa amin, sa yung mga youth dito, uh, uh, nag-create po sila ng grupo, youth organization nila. Uh, every time, uh, every time uh, magkakaroon sila ng, uh, nag-gather kami ng, uh, nag nag invite pala kami ng mga uh, alim or ustads or mga nagdadao talaga. So mag-ano kami, mag, uh, nag-ano yan sila, nag, uh, uh, si-share ng mga, ng ano nila, pagkain na para dun sa, para ipakain dun sa, na uh, ininvite nila na ano ininvite nila na yung mga hostages mga ano para uh, magkakaroon ng seminars uh, mag-aano yan sila ng topic kung anong topic ang gusto nila at saka yun ang ipapanood nila dun sa mga alim or hostages pa para magkaroon sila ng uh, mga kaalaman sa mga youth dito nagkakaisa sila dito sa ano and every time naman na uh, every time naman din na uh, <coughs> every time naman din na uh, may mga malaking okasyon dito, yung mga youth dito, nagkakaroon sila ng mga programs, halimbawa, halimbawa magkakaroon sila ng uh, 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 contest ng Adan, yun ang ano yan, contest ng Adan, at saka yung mga sura na nalalaman nila, e, nagano yan sila, na, nag, uh, uh, naggumagawa ng program. At least yung mga kabataan, alam natin kung sino yung may alam, alam natin at saka sino, sino, yung, sino yung magaling, sino yung may nalalaman. Tapos maipapalabas nila dun yung uh, kaalaman nila. Hindi sila mahiya kasi yung mga pro na yung ano, contest na yun may ano yun eh, may parang may konting, konting ano lang, konting premyo. At least ma ano sila doon na ay gusto kong sumali ganito para yun yung time na yun, nagkakaisa sila doon. At least meron namang suporta sa mga ulama dito, uh, sinusuporta ang kabataan para at least ma ma maipapakita nila o maipapaalam nila yung kakayahan nila sa sa Arabic ano sa Arabic uh, uh, dito sa Arabic school nila na nalalaman na, na nila yun. Hmm. So far naman, maraming kabataan na marami pa lang alam na ano, hindi natin alam kasi hindi natin kasi hindi naman din nila pinapalabas kasi wala ng wala ng uh, organization na ganun. So yung pinag-iisipan ng mga ano dito, mga youth, nag-o-organize talaga sila sa mga ano, pinag-ano, nag-e-elect sila din ng nag-e-elect din sila ng mga officers para mag-conduct at least uh, pa, every time meron mga pagkakataon na Uh, ganon mga programa uh, ipapaalam nila dito sa mga youth. So nagkakaisa naman din yung mga youth dito at uh, yun. Tapos pagkat uh, meron pang isa pagdating din ng mga yung yung mga livelihood din, meron din silang ginagawang uh, mga livelihood din katulad ng uh, halimbawa uh, halimbawa yung yung paggagawa pag pagluluto nga sa mga babaeng ano sa mga babaeng mga mga youth yeah. nagluluto sila ng ipper yung pagluluto nila sisters brother binebenta nila yun binebenta nila yun para sa ano sa pagdating ng panahon ng mga mga malaking okasyon na kailangan nila yung pondo yun ang ginagamit nila so pinapadagdagan lang sa mga barangay at mga politiko na ano kay para madagdagan yung ano nila yun ang nangyayari dito. It, uh, uh, parang ano din ang organize ang youth dito. Yun ang kagandahan dito sa ano. At sinusuporta din ng barangay para at least maano ma, yung mga bata. Ano, hindi hindi lang hindi lang paglalaro, hindi lang pagmo-mobile ang alam nila, hindi lang paglalakwat siya. So pag meron silang mga dagdag kaalaman doon sa mga nangyayaring programa dito, at least kasali din sila sa ano ng community dito. Sa mga pamangkin ko naman, uh, ano yan sila. <laughs> Minomodel ko yan sila sa, ano, sa mga halimbawa yun sa business namin. Minomodel ko yan sila kung paano maging model ng ano, damit pang hijab, mga damit pang Muslim attire, yun. At least nakikita ng mga ito, maganda pala yung ano, yung mga uh, uh, ganyang kasuotan. So parang na ano din yung mga tao dito na parang yung dahan-dahan na rin binawala ng mga kabataan na magsusuot ng mga yung katulad mga sexy ano 
kasi nakikita nila nga yung mga model na ibang mga bat kabataan na nagsusuot talaga ng uh, mga mga dress code na kailangan ng mga Muslim. Ganun ang nangyayari dito sa kabataan dito. Alhamdulillah naman, okay naman so far dito ang organization ng mga kabataan. Kailangan talaga kailangan lang talaga natin sis ang role model talaga good good uh, good model talaga para sa mga kabataan Nasa natin. Atin. Nasa oh, atin nakikita, ang pag-asa nila. <laughs> nakikita nakikita na nakikita nila sa ano kasi paano 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 ay maitatong paano nila masusunod yung mga ano ng Muslim kung mismo yung parents nila or elders nila hindi nagpapakita ng uh, uh, good model magandang. ng uh, magandang magandang hmm. ano ng Muslim so hindi natin pwedeng ano, kasi dito yung mga kabataan doon sila kasi minsan meron ako na meron akong sinabi hata sa sinabi bakit si ano ganito hindi naman siya nag-ano wala naman nangyari ganun ganun parang ano nakikita nila sa matatanda yan ang sinusunod nila so ngayon kay kasi tayo kailangan natin gumawa ng magandang magandang uh, sa ano pa performance para sa mga bata. Mapakita natin sa mga bata na tayo talaga ang model. 'Yun ang susundin nila habang lumalaki na malaki sila. Uh, parang na ano, na-adapt nila yung mga ano na yun, mga tradition o mga mga beliefs na mga Muslim. Alhamdulillah, napakaganda yeah. ng talakayan natin. Alhamdulillah. Na babalanse halimbawa yung sa sharing ko kanina was purely on the non-Muslim side, though I am a Muslim, but exposure ko is of different type. Yung sa inyo naman, Sister uh, Mona Leaf, is with regards to a community that is really with, uh, among Muslim, di ba? And napakaganda, napakaganda yung sharing mo with uh, yung nabanggit mo kanina about contest, pa-contest sa azan, pa-contest sa pagbabasa. <laughs> That's very yeah. nice activity, alhamdulillah. Sana, uh, that it, ito yung talaga ini-envision siguro rin with Moto Express PH, la, lalo na for the past month, may pa-contest din ang yari dito sa, ano, sa uh, online dito sa GPTV 168, yung um, mag, mag, ano, banggit, uh, mag-recite ng sura for yeah. mga ilang yeah. minutes. Okay, Robin Padilla. Mag-sponsor oh. ni Robin Padilla. Yung, 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 oh. Kasi maraming sumali dito sa amin. Sa aming community, maraming sumali. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah And, At least maano natin yung mga ano nila, yung kaalaman nila. Kasi most of uh, the mga youth dito sis, nag-aaral ng Arabic school. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And kakaiba Kaya, naman po dito sa ano sa sa Visayas, particularly in our uh, province sa Cebu, uh, doon uh, increasing ang mga Muslims dito in, in terms sa numbers, ano, but... Uh, ito napapansin ko, siguro for more than three years already, uh, hindi pa rin nag-improve yung ganong aspekto as uh, Muslim, di pag anong na-develop talaga among our youth, yung mga love for uh, the reading of the Quran, the recitation of the Quran, inshallah. But uh, ito yung in-envision ko na rin, inshallah, na para bang... Uh, from kagaya lang sa sa on the department of which uh, I was in yung sa DepEd uh, kung halimbawa may sports meet at first uh, within the school level ang pa-contest and then within the municipality na naman ang pa-contest and then nag-wide siya parang uh, lumalawak siya uh, let's say uh, meron na siyang involvement with within the Uh, Cebu Province, so nasa northeast, uh, northwest, uh, southeast, southwest na mga winners, halimbawa sa mga different tournament, uh, to be uh, into sport fest. Of course, pwede rin natin siguro makikita ang ganong activities. Yes, uh, hmm. among our youth na uh, from a small or from one town, then para mag, mag, ano siya, mag-grow to let's say the province wide o kaya uh, region wide at national level yung pa contest mm-hmm. i remember last 2018 i think that was 2018 when i was in uh, manila there was one contest po uh, i think it was in Quezon city may pa contest sa ano sa sa pag uh, recite ng quran alhamdulillah 
And then dito rin sa 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 no sa within CMF meron din but uh, uh, ang problema lang is that uh, ang mga activities on the ground level talaga mismo sa mga communities of mga Muslim hindi gaano pa ito na i ipa-implement. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Siguro uh, bunga na lang siguro na much of our Muslims here are revert to Islam. They don't have much idea kung ano pa mga pwedeng activities. But with our sharing this uh, this evening, alhamdulillah, may napupulutan na tayo mga iba't ibang mga pwede nating magawang mga activities that would really benefit sa ating mga kabataan. And of course, we have mentioned that uh, there are a lot of challenges na na-face ang ating mga, mga kabataan. But alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. Tayo as mga parents ayo as anti o ano sa in the community nabibigyan talaga ang halaga ng ang mga kabataan with the kind of exposures na ginagawa ninyo like when mm-hmm. in our brother Dawood you mentioned about mga uh, activities by which na enhance o na i-develop yung leadership skill ng mga kabataan ninyo diyan kahit ko konti lang kayo diyan brother Dawood Alhamdulillah. And yeah, with Sister Lenny, though yung kanyang uh, nag-iisa lamang siya as Muslim dyan, but sa puso at damdami ng kanyang mga anak, parang Muslims na rin, di ba po, Sister Lenny? Oh, Nagre-remind yes. sa inyo. So, and then, that is really a very, parang it's already a gift to us na kahit they don't speak this uh, uh, in words, but yung mga actions nila we can feel that somehow parang the 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 seed of islam is already planted in their hearts and minds alhamdulillah and also with the activities sa mga naggagawa niyo diyan especially yung mga muslim talaga kayo diyan sa inyong uh, uh, surrounding sister monalif and you know i'm so happy that at least alhamdulillah you're with me to Para nababalansi yung uh, usapan. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and I am so happy that you have joined uh, this program. And uh, then uh, ipadating natin sa ating mga tagapagsubaybay, lalo na sa ating mga Muslim community, na uh, in your own level, may ginagawa kayo. And of course, meron din silang mga ginagawa at their own level rin. Hindi lang natin alam. And we hope, inshallah, may mga marami pa tayong pagkakataon to discuss further sa mga issues and concerns that really affects us as Muslim. Um, uh, since we're about to end our program, Sister Lenny, anong uh, parting words natin para sa, anong minsay natin para sa ating mga uh, tagapagsubaybay, Sister? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ang masasabi ko lang po sa ating mga nanonood at nakikinig sa mga oras na ito ay sana marami silang napulot at marami silang nalaman lalong-lalo na sa pagkakaroon ng reliyong Islam na mailagay nila sa puso nila at matanggap nila ang Islam at nung hindi pa nakapag- natanggap ang Islam ay mabuksan sana ang mga puso at isipan nila sa reliyong Islam dahil ang Islam ang siyang tunay na reliyong na reliyon na makakarating tayo sa ating minimithing para iso pagdating ng panahon na tayo ibawin Amen. na ng buhay dito sa dunya. Amen. Amen. Napakaganda. What about uh, Sister Mona Liv? Our message, your message please. Um, dito maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga man- nanonood. Uh, mm-hmm. Lagi po kayong manonood dito sa ano sa pag-usapan natin at saka yung mga live ano dito sa uh, GPTV168. Uh, tapos uh, para kasi marami kayong mapupulot na mga mga maraming idea na hindi niyo alam na uh, nagagather natin sa isa't isa na nagagawa nating i-share sa anun sa isa't isa na hindi natin alam marami po tayong uh, marami pa po tayong uh, tatalakayin na mga issues na tungkol sa about Islam uh, dito po dito po sa live natin uh, uh, makikita niyo po dito yung mga 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 ano yung magagandang usapin at least at least um, 
at least uh, madagdagan pa yung ano natin kaalaman natin dito sa programang ito at maraming salamat po sis Elaine na uh, pinagbigyan mo po kami na makasali sa inyong programa at Eleni salamat po at Tony North salamat po uh, sir sir it's my own uh, maraming po salamat at sa mga great card at lahat po ng nanonood alhamdulillah po maraming po ako nagpipunan dito sa programang ito alhamdulillah salamat po like, po para kami para kami para kami And what about Gary the Wood? Ano message? Ano message? Ah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kasi ano wala pa ni. Ah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Ang tayo ko lang po may payo. Ah, sa ating mga viewers, dala sa ating mga kapatid para sa palataya. Lagi po nating pakaingatan ang ating mga anak. No, lagi nating pakaingatan ang ating mga anak. Ipakita natin sa kanila yung tamang pamamaraan ng pagkikipagrelasyon. Gamitin natin yung hikmah, na yung wisdom, baba ang loob. Huwag tayong gumamit ng pagkagalit. Pakita natin sa kanila na ang Islam ay lagi kapayapaan. Dahil dito makikita nila yung ating relationship sa kanila ay hindi mapapantayan ng kahit na ano. Dahil ito pagmamahal natin mula sa ating uh, Panginoon, ang ala sa Banu at Ta'ala. No, hindi po para lang sa ating mga sarili kundi pagkos para din sa kanila no, insya Allah marami tayong natutunan sa ano na to, sa programa ito alhamdulillah na, nagpapasalamat ako dyan sa Kalaho Kairan sa ating uh, sister sa kay brother uh, Atorni Nuno Hernandez alhamdulillah at uh, binigay niya itong programa ito para makita natin na uh, magkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon ng um, magkapanayan insya Allah insya Allah patumbayan tayo lahat niya alas pano tala Jazakallah khairan po sa inyong lahat. Um, um, Wa'yakum. Wa'yakum. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah sa mga time sa mga na naiblaan ninyo uh, Brother Dawood, uh, Brother Dawood Sister, Lenny and Sister Lenny and Sister Mona Liv. Sister Mona Liv. And, and thank you rin sa ating mga tagapanood sa, sa pagsubaybay ng programa natin this uh, Friday. Friday. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah next Inshallah week magkakaroon po tayo ng mga karagdagang kaalaman. Especially sa ating ating din Islam. Islam. Ito po yung lingkod, Elenida Jess. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.